Thanks for logging on to Christ Notes. Today we're going to start talking about one of the most powerful things our Father's ever shown me. And we're going to talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the reason it's so powerful to me is, I'll start with the story of why and, and when God showed it to me. It was years ago. And it was kind of neat because I was in a nursing home. God was having me teach. And we had just finished up studying Revelation. And there's a really powerful saying in Revelation, and it says, blessed are those who read this prophecy out loud, and blessed are those who hear it being read out loud in the congregation. There's a blessing when we get together and we study Revelation. And it was kind of neat because I had, there was other guys there helping me in the, in the uh, Bible study, and they didn't want to study Revelation, but there was a lady named Tony, and Tony, who was, had um, lung cancer and it had moved into her liver, and she was, she was dying, she said, I want to study Revelation. And I looked down the, the when she said it, the other guy said, no, no, that's too deep for, for a nursing home. But when I looked down, I, she was glowing. And so we started studying Revelation. And then it's amazing. After we did that, all these things, the Holy Spirit just kept showing me and showing me and showing me. So we'd finished Revelation. We'd go over and we're studying about the marriage supper of the Lamb. And my wife, Beth, she was there with us that night. So we go and I teach it like I, I normally teach, you know, that the talking about the marriage supper, we're there. It's all of us who are saved are there together celebrating and we get home, <clears throat> excuse me, and Beth asked me this, this question. She says, Brad, who are these guests that it talks about at the marriage supper? I said, well, what do you mean, who are the guests? That's, that's us, right? That's us. And she goes, well, wait a minute, Brad. I, I wasn't a guest at my own wedding. I was the bride. I had guests, but I wasn't a guest. And you know when you have one of those aha moments when all of a sudden the Holy Spirit really shows you something? That was that moment. I rolled out of bed. I went running over to my computer and it's like the Holy Spirit just started showing me scripture after scripture after scripture and showing me just how victorious Jesus was on the cross that we get to have guests in eternity with us. It's not just going to be the bride of Christ. I mean, there, there's a time for just the bride and the groom to get together. I mean, and that time is, is wonderful. There's intimacy there. That's, the, that's the, the wedding evening. But the party, the supper, that's when you want people around to celebrate what you have. You want guests. And that's what the parable of the marriage supper tells us. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like this. So there's these guests in eternity, and we get to have them there with us. And that's what's so great. So jumping in here, we're going to study out of Matthew 22, starting in verse 1. It says, And again Jesus spoke to them in parables and comparisons and stories used to illustrate and to explain, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. All right? So let's talk about parables for a second, because the disciples came to Jesus and they said, why don't you just talk plainly? Why don't you tell us plainly what we're supposed to, to, to know and to do? And Jesus told him, I speak in parables because it's not for everybody to know right now. See, we're the bride. There's an intimacy there. We know what's going on. We have the mind of Christ. Jesus tells us that we're no longer his servants but we're his friends. We're not longer just servants, we're friends. So he'll tell us everything that's going on. The Bible tells us that we've been given the Holy Spirit and he will plainly show us those things to come. He'll bring to our remembrance whatsoever things Jesus has ever said and he'll teach us all things. So we have an intimacy with Jesus that the world just doesn't have because we have the Holy Spirit because we are the bride of Christ. And we're not just a bride, we're a friend. We have a good marriage and that's what Jesus is trying to tell us here. So we have all the knowledge that Jesus has. I want you to understand that. We're not limited in any way, shape, or form. We do not have to wait to heaven to get everything that Jesus has provided because why? Today is a day of our salvation. Now is our accepted time. So as we're studying about the, the marriage supper and we keep going back and we're gonna read later about the guest, but I want you to understand Jesus was really, really successful on the cross and his mercy and grace, like the Bible says, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. In Romans, it tells us that all men have been consigned to disobedience, only that he may have mercy on all men alike. The Bible says that our Father would that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And I want you to keep thinking about that. At a wedding, think of your wedding, there were guests. There were guests all over the place. And then, I got a fly coming right here, and there's guests all over the place. And that made the wedding supper a lot of fun. And think of this too. Remember when there was the guest there, the bride and the groom, they served those guests. Those guests weren't there to serve the bride and groom because like at my wedding, 
We provided food. We provided cake. We provided entertainment. We provided drinks. And we made sure that these people got to sit next to those people who they like and the people that kind of didn't get along a little bit, we kind of put them in another place so they wouldn't be uncomfortable. And then Beth and I went around the wedding the whole time, the, the supper and the feast, making sure people were happy, making sure they felt welcomed. And that's eternity. Remember what Jesus tells us. He says, you want to be great? You got to be the biggest servant. So what do we do in eternity? We serve. And who are we serving? Guess. You know, the Bible says we rule and reign. Well, who are we going to rule and reign over? It's not each other. We rule and reign over these guests. And how do we rule them? By serving them. So I guess that's a good place to stop here. I hope this starts to encourage you. And I hope as we end this study, you'll see just really how compassionate our Father was and how victorious and fun eternity is going to be because it's just not going to be a few of us there. The room is going to be filled with guests. Thanks. Have a great day.